Hey, hey. I am doing a interview tonight, having a conversation with one of my friends. Um, her name is Amy Fenton. She's from Nashville, too. We've known each other for about seven years, and she works with Rethink and Reggie Joyner and the team at Orange. And so I thought it'd be encouraging to talk to her about what churches are doing, what church staff members are doing, um, what volunteers are doing. Hey! hey. Look oh, at I'm us. Close. <laughs> yeah, you are really close. <laughs> Sorry. Like, you were like old person close to the camera. Like, it's so great to see you. <laughs> well, it must be. I'm on my readers. So there Do you, you want to look from an angle? Like when your kid shows you something funny on TikTok that's not funny? <laughs> this is going real well. Real well. Yeah, we're already off to a good start. <laughs> I have questions. Um, I've written down. I'll, I'll show you the questions because I think I kind of want to take credit for that. Um, look, look at all those questions. Don't look at them too quick. I don't want you to have an answer prepared. I like to do things off the cuff. You like to make me think on the fly. I love it. Exactly. So I was telling people watching that if you're a church uh, leader, church staff member, volunteer, small group leader, VBS coordinator, I think this will be really encouraging um, because we're in the middle. I don't know if you notice, like there's a ton of change going on. Um, and so I wanted to ask some questions and then I need to make sure that I ask you about Easter Jam and that we send people to the right link. I think it's think orange slash Easter jam, but you probably know even better than I do. Um, and we'll test that before we get people going. So yeah. we've known each other for seven years now. Um, Has it been both seven were, years? I think so. Yeah. Six oh. years of your of small group. So I think I knew you before Ellie. Um, You're right. We both work for Reggie Joyner um, and the team at Rethink in Atlanta. These are crazy times for a lot of people and a lot of churches. So my first question is, what would you say is your favorite thing about me? <laughs> about you. Yeah, I mean, like, thing about you. <laughs> no, that's, I you don't have to answer things, that. I have three things I love about you. Here are three things I love about you. What have I started I every that interview that way? I, I love that you married Jenny Acuff, and I yep. love that you gave birth to Ellie McCray. Those are great three things. Those are, I didn't have a ton to do with the birth so much, but I was like, I was there doing this. Like they taught us in class to do this with your hands and like, that's relaxing. And then like, put your hands on your wife's shoulders. And Jenny, the first time I did this in the delivery room was like, don't you dare touch me with any sort of like, oh, I'll warm my hands up karate kid style. That didn't go well. For I can totally picture it. She was not having it. So what do you, what's the biggest question you're hearing from churches right now? Yeah, gosh, John, I think in this, probably in the past two weeks, I've used the word pivot more. Like, I feel like Ross and Friends in that episode where he keeps yelling pivot. Like, I, they don't know, um, they don't know what to do. I mean, people are trying to figure out a new normal. And I've seen everything from leaders go to, I'm going to do everything. And so they're doing like, 15 Facebook lives a day and, you know, eight things every family should do and post on Instagram, which is great. Um, but some are like almost like going over and beyond. And then other ministry leaders just have shut down and they're just trying to figure out what, what is priority here? Like what's the most important thing that we should be doing right now? And they have to do it from home. Um, so it's just such a weird season for so many leaders out there. Do you think the number one priority is different depending on the ministry, the community they're serving, their strengths, their weaknesses? Yeah, for sure. Um, like I have a friend, Keith Bryant, he's at a church in Arkansas and they have a heavy population of, um, like first responders in their church and they were all, all of their kids were being kicked out of daycare because nobody wanted their kids, you know, around other children because uh -huh. they were afraid they had been exposed to the virus. So he and his team and their church stepped up and they have started a daycare for um, doctors and first responders and, you know, everybody on the front lines of this, which I think is really amazing. Um, so, you know, in their community, that was the best way for them to respond. Um, 
other communities, you know, they're finding ways to do things. If they learn, a, if their church has a lot of elderly people, they're finding things that their families can do to encourage people who are isolated right now. I mean, um, it definitely, definitely depends on the situation, but people are just trying to figure out how to be helpful. What, um, what do you think small group leaders can do to stay connected right now? Like, what are, what are you seeing where you go, wow, that's really smart? Because there is a temptation to be like, we'll just flip this switch that everything was offline is now online. And like some things are awkward online. They're not meant for that. Other things are even better online than they would be offline. So like, what are you seeing that smart small group leaders are doing? Yes. Well, um, can I back up a step and say, yep. first of all, like, I think that we've always at Orange, we've really, really talked about the importance of small group of putting somebody else in your child's life to say what you're saying. Um, we believe in the power of small groups. And so if your church is one of those that you were like, yeah, that sounds good and we're going to do it someday. Um, right now, I found that a lot of them are going, okay, wait a minute. We really needed to have that in place. So, mm -hmm. so like, what do we do? How do we, how do we go back? they're connected to somebody um, because they, we don't want to lose them. I mean, now is not the time to lose families, especially um, kids and families. So I think that I've seen several cool things. Um, my favorite thing that my kids are about to do right now with our youth group is get on Zoom. Um, I'd say favorite thing. I'm kind of tired of Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it's, too, it's just starting. Like, it's too late to be tired of Zoom. Like, or it's too early. It's too early. Like, too Zoom early. is, like, it's just, it, yeah. I'm tired of it too. But it, I mean, like, but I do love how simple it is. Like, 20 years ago when I was in the workforce, like, the idea that you could have five people and then broadcast that into Facebook and then, like, it was affordable. Like, it feels like Jetsons to me. Like, I wish we had a flying car. But like Zoom, I'm like, all right, like I'm, I'm cool with Zoom. Like, I think that it's one of those things where you're like, all right. So what, they're going to go be part of their small group. What does that mean? They're going to pop, like they have a Zoom call with each small group. Yes. And I, um, I see so many people doing this right now. Even I had a meeting with a ministry leader today and they're rethinking their VBS because you referred to VBS they're going to even assign kids virtual small groups via Zoom for their VBS. So they'll do an experience at home that people can tune in and watch. And then kids will go and log in just to meet with their specific small group to try to keep that, um, you know, that connection. That's the missing piece that can be so easy to lose in this is that personal connection. Somebody said house party app. That's another good one that can be used to gather a group of people together to hang out. I don't know. Do you know that one, John? I don't. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's zoom for teenagers, basically. Ah, <laughs> it's, nice. It's a cooler version version of zoom kind of. Um, but yeah, I, I just think that connection is so important and fighting for that and whatever that may look like. My um, sister sent me a picture Sunday. She met with her little four-year-old small group via Zoom, and they were so happy to see her, just to see her uh, face. Yeah, um, that's fun. So I think it can be used for anybody just to find a way to connect and do something fun with them. Okay, so if Zoom is one technology, what are the other two technologies that you're like, every church should um, take these going forward? Because that's that's the benefit of a crisis is it, is that I keep telling people a crisis is a classroom like and it get, it encourages you to learn lessons you wouldn't have learned on your own. So what lessons do you take going forward? What does what do those look like? So let's say there's three technologies that you're like, man, I hope the church engages in these. Zoom's one. What are the other two? Yes. Okay. So my new favorite thing is Be Live. It's B dot Live, and it connects through your Facebook account but it lets you actually broadcast. It just looks a little better than a Facebook Live. So it's basically a Facebook Live, but it's a better vehicle to mm -hmm. do Facebook Live. Um, you can invite people into the conversation and you're, you're talking almost, it looks like a TV studio. Um, 
So that's one of my favorite new things. I think that's pretty new on the market or it's new to me. Yep. Um, another is, I mean, this, I love Instagram live. I think it's such mm -hmm. a cool thing. I think every church needs to be engaging on social media as best they can. Yeah. in their version of it, that's the other thing is that I keep telling businesses too, like, we're not expecting you to be awesome right now. Like we all suck at all the things like because they're new, like they're new. And so there's this really beautiful grace period where you can try something that you might've been judged at three months ago, but because everybody's like, eh, we're figuring it out. They'll forgive you for being a little bit awkward at it. So yeah. um, what do you think? So it's Wednesday, Easter is Sunday what would you tell churches in the space between like what would be like oh here's you know keep this in mind or be encouraged like you know what ha what happens this week that they need to know yes oh goodness i mean it I've, there's been so many sad church sad leaders because they love this time of year and so mm -hmm. i think it's okay to take a second to grieve that loss um you know and just deal with the fact that it's not going to look the way it's looked. Um, but I would say don't lose hope. I mean, this, this morning, I'm going to get churchy on you for a minute, but this morning I was reading in my Bible in Matthew 5, 13, it said, um, I liked the way it phrases. It said, you are the world seasoning um, to make it tolerable. And I think this is our opportunity to be salt and light to the world, even more so in this time. So I think in getting creative in what we do for kids and families right now to let them know that we're still here, that Easter is still happening and hasn't been canceled, um, to find ways to engage them. People are doing such a good job of shifting what they're thinking. I, I talked to a ministry leader this week he lives in the state of Georgia. He had spent his team, they had put together hundreds and hundreds of these boxes that they were going to have the small group leaders come to the church and pick all the boxes up and deliver them on Saturday to the families and, um, you know, make it a big surprise. Well, then Georgia went under like basically lockdown yep. and he had 24 hours to figure out Either he could have just stopped and said, oh, well, never mind. Or he rallied the troops and got those things like we got to do it today before this state is shut down. Let's go, go, go. And he he rallied and they got thousands of boxes to all these homes and all these families just to give them a little special touch. So um, keep engaging people right now more than ever, I would say, in, in these outlets. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of those things where it is those little things, like even old school things, like calling somebody on the phone to check in on them is one of those, like, I, I just find again, like I'm come from the business side of things, like even asking people what they need half the time, they're just honored. You asked, like, it's yeah. not like they come up with 20 things. They're just like, wow, you actually saw me. Like, I always say that, like, everybody just wants to be seen, like in a world where we're so self-obsessed with kind of our own little world, when you look up and say like, hey, what do you actually need? I want to shift, speaking of Easter, talk to me about what Orange is doing for Easter. So they're putting together something called Easter Jam. Um, Easter Jam. And tell me a little about what the plan, yeah, and it's available at thinkorange.com um, slash Easter. I looked it up, the word think, the word orange.com slash Easter. Tell me a little about that, because there, there will be, definitely be people that are helped by that resource. Yes. So this was one of those things where we had to, we had to pivot. So this was something we designed a long time ago to be a family experience, to be done live in a church together. And a couple of weeks ago, we realized um, that's, that's not going to happen. And so what can we do? So we pulled in, we actually pulled in the student team at Orange, the preschool team, the kids team, and all collaborated together. I say we a team of amazing people in Atlanta. So it's mostly you. It was mostly you that did all this. Okay. I just want to make sure everybody watching Amy Fenton, I saved Easter. Good. Go on. So they pulled this together and took the parts 
some parts and pieces of Easter jam that they made it even, um, even more than what it was originally, which I just, I love the team I get to work with and how creative they are. So they made it where it is going to be great. If you have a teenager in your house and a preschooler and an elementary school student, it's something that will literally engage all of them. So it's a fun experience. It's got worship music. It's got, um, peep jousting. It's got the Easter story. It's, mm -hmm. It's just a collaboration of some fun things for families to do together. If they are sitting at home thinking, okay, we, we're going to watch our church's Easter service online, but our kids feel like they're missing out. So what yeah. can we do as a family? And I tell people, it doesn't have to be done on Sunday. Do it on Friday. Do it on Saturday. Just make, make it a priority sometime together as a family and use this Easter Jam experience to um, just, I think, this is going to be an Easter we'll never forget, any of us, yep. um, good or bad. And I hope it's just for really special, sweet memories of an Easter celebrated in your living room in a way that you never dreamed. Yep. I, and I think it will be. I mean, it's it's a, such a great thing because you're right. The service, if you are planning to have the kids in Sunday school or some sort of small group thing during the service, the service might mention like a joke about Easter eggs, but it might not have been designed for all of a sudden there's all these kids watching and, you know, participating. So to have an option for them, I think is awesome. Speaking of things that we're pivoting on you and I, one of the biggest things you do all year, one of the biggest things I do all year um, is the orange conference. Um, it's more yeah. than 8,000 people. It's at the Gwinnett arena. I think it changed names like nine times the Gwinnett arena, but it's like <laughs> the powers ferry booth energy center for transformation. Like it's, I don't know. It's an acronym. Um, and like they had over a hundred countries, like it was always 86 people from Norway and it was this amazing time together. So what does it, what does it look like? How do we encourage the people that we're going to attend? Um, the people that might get to attend now because they don't have to travel. Like how do we make sure that they feel connected for a digital experience? Like what's your hope for orange conference this year? Gosh, I'm so excited about orange conference. I can't tell you the number of people who said, I couldn't afford to travel. I couldn't afford to come in the hotel and they're going to be a part. So just the fact that I believe we'll have more than 8,000 people engaged is super exciting to me because I always think, oh my gosh, I hate that. You know, I think of a list of people that I wish were there and they couldn't be. It's such, it's just so inspirational for me to listen to all the leaders like John Acuff speaking to us our lives while we're there. Um, and so I would say to leaders, just leverage this opportunity. Whereas before you might have been able to pick four breakouts now, if you come, come to Virtual Orange Conference, you get 50 plus breakouts and you get all of them. So you can pick to be a part of more breakouts, more sessions. It's gonna, it's really gonna be more. You know, it's so ironic that the title was Every Generation Needs a Revolution. We just had no idea we were going no, to. I know, to I know. I feel like next year's, title, next year's title should be Every John Acuff Needs a Million Dollars. And then like in February, you're like, what? They just, the that's amazing. I mean, I'll do some <laughs> good with it. Not all good. I'm not Jesus. Like I'm trying to be like him. Um, but I, well, I we'll think, tell Reggie that's the title. <laughs> he might be watching. I don't know though. I think that what's interesting is you're right. Every year when I'm there, I I think about all the people there that are calling back home, going, "Oh, I just heard this thing. I just saw this thing," and so it's really exciting to think the people you always wished I could bring with me, you do get to bring with you, and I think that's super powerful. I think it's a great community builder. Even if you're watching it individually in individual homes, it's a chance for you to all have kind of the same conversation and be able to get, because the challenge is you go to a three-day event and then you have to come home and try to translate that and go like, well, let me recreate it with my words. And everybody that didn't go is like, eh, I mean, like that one story about the turtle peen sounds interesting. Like <laughs> but you didn't tell us what it was really about. So I think that's I think that's super fun. Now, one of the reasons we know each other so well is that you've um, been my daughter's, my oldest daughter's small group leader for six years. Um, yeah. 
And I, I tell that story from stage at Orange events often. Um, so I'm curious, from your perspective, what makes you want to lead a small group? What makes you want to lead a small group for six years? Like, I think that's part of the DNA of Orange, but I think a lot of people don't get exposed to that. So from your perspective, what led you to do that and to keep doing that? Right. You know, I always tell people when I'm encouraging ministry leaders to cast a vision for constant, for um, consistent small group leaders in the lives of kids, I always tell them people want to be asked to do something significant. They, they want to. And I, for me, getting involved with this group, I had no idea. Like literally, I started this group thinking, we started in February. It was a very snowy January, and we delayed and started in February, back when these girls were in fifth and sixth grade. There's and there's the girl right now. Ellie, come here. <laughs> Say hi to... There's my girl. Hi, Miss Amy. Say, there's Ellie. Ellie. Look. We Look. just talked on the phone an hour ago. She was telling me lots of stories about you. They're about, oh, yeah. They were probably out... <laughs> Is it all my work with the homeless? Because I don't, I don't like to talk about that on social media. It was a lot I don't of want, charitable work, and I want but, God's glory, not man's. But go on. Sure, sure. But you know, for me, like when we got to the end of that year, I thought I love these girls, and I love how they love each other. And so I just said to them, like, "Hey, what if we met next year?" And they were like, "Well, of course." I mean, they looked at me like well, you were thinking we weren't going to meet next year. Yeah. And every year when we get to the end of the year, I, you can ask Ellie, I always say, you know, if you guys want to meet again next year, I'll start working on what we're going to talk about. And they always just are like, we please stop asking that. Like yep. they, it's become so personal to me. They are my, they're my girls. They're, they're a part of my family. Um, you know, we're making plans for college now, all of them. And yes. I, I, it's just, it's so sweet. And, and it's something that you can't, understand until you experience it until you take a risk and invest your life in somebody else and it's just like any other thing we do like when you go on a mission trip and you think you're going to help them and you come back totally changed it's that same principle like they have changed me for the better just having them in my life I, it reminds me of crystal chang who also works with orange where she tells a story her girls graduated she been a group for years they graduated they're going to college and one of them i think they called or texted her and said hey are we meeting this week and it broke her heart because she was like no we like our six years ended and she was going to college but saying i don't like i need community like what is that you know and that's how much it matters um it matters to them so i'm curious one of the things that you're an expert on and this will probably be my second to last question is vbs you work with thousands of churches every year on VBS. So I'd be remiss if I didn't say, okay, tell me riff on VBS 2020. Like, what does that mean? What does that look like? Um, like what's different? What's the same? Yeah, gosh, we are rethinking VBS as we speak. So the, in fact, I met with Preston Wood. It's a church in Texas today. Small, and they Small just, church. A little church. <laughs> they wanted to just, pick my brain a little bit and think through, you know, if we, if we need to do this in homes, what can that look like? How can we keep it fresh and exciting? And I think that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to think three things. Number one, we're hoping that churches will be able to do VBS, you know, in real time in a church building. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them have delayed it till August because they're, they're going to make it a back to school bash and they're hopeful by then it'll be a safe time. Um, but we're also, uh, I and some of our team, we're working on rewriting content to make it relevant. So if we can only gather in groups of 10, how can we make this like a backyard, you know, backyard Bible club in your neighborhood? And if we can't even get together in groups of 10, then what do we do to make it a really meaningful experience at home for kids and families? Because right now, everybody's overwhelmed. You know, we're trying to figure out this homeschool thing and, yeah. and make sure our kids are doing work and we're doing work. But come summer, that's all going to be gone. And if we're still in this scenario of being in our houses all the time, then I know working parents for sure are going to need something significant for their kids to do. So I feel like... In VBS world, whether it's a 
big gathering at a church and looks just like VBS any other summer, or if it's a VBS experience at home, I think it's going to be needed either way more than ever before. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. And I think that the challenge is preparing for three different scenarios and going, yeah. okay, everything's normal. And that's where there's so much tension right now. It's like, we're, I think we, I, I keep swinging from like, everything is going to be normal in like an hour to like, Soon we won't have money. It'll be some sort of space credit that's made of like Martian stone. And you're like, you know, here, you know, kind of keeps going back and forth. I think um, my last question, and this one isn't VBS related or church related necessarily, but I know because of our relationship that you're a single mom superstar. Like you're holding it down with three teenagers inside a house. I think a lot of times when we talk about parenting, we say, you know, you and your husband, you and your wife, and it's a we scenario. So like, what would you say to single moms or single dads that are going, okay, how do I, you know, how do I navigate this season? Yeah, gosh, if you figure it out, message me. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, (laughs) just hit her up directly. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, I mean, John knows, John and Jenny, I've messaged them a couple of times and just said, hey, I'm going to sit on the porch and I'm going to Zoom you guys and can we eat dinner together? Because I just need to have an adult conversation. Yeah. Um, John and Jenny and a couple other friends of ours where we just need to have some sanity. Um, you know, I'm in, I have three teenagers and so that's a challenge. I think... Um, Today, I was thinking about this when I was a single mom and they were like three, four, and six. I can't imagine. And I know there's a lot of single moms in that boat right now with preschoolers. Um, so I would say just don't don't get lost in the day-to-day. Keep reaching out to the people that you know love you and care for you and will um, sit with you via Zoom on your back porch and eat dinner with you for a minute or talk to you after the kids go to bed. Like keep some adult conversation. Keep telling people when it feels stressful, be real. Um, just be real and ask for help when you need it. I know it's hard for people to help us right now. You know, my parents live close and they love to help me with my kids, but yeah. they can't they can't be close to us right now. So um, just lean in and get the help that you can. Uh, tonight, I just couldn't manage dinner. And we ordered Chick-fil-A delivery and life went on. You know, I just have made it a rule. I do, I'm going to do what I can do. And what I can't do, I can't do. And it's okay. Yeah. And you accept that and you don't carry the weight of, oh, wow, I wish I was able to do that. Right. I I just can't. I mean, it, it will weigh you down and there's enough weighing you down. And I would say this to church leaders. I mean, that's a great, I know you didn't ask this for church leaders, but um, think about the people that might need you. You know, think about the single moms in your church that might need something. And and that's up for you. You know, you decide what they might need, but just do something to surprise and delight them and make their day. Um, because it's it's a challenge for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, and I, we're on the outside of that, but we get to overlap because we know your kids. Um, we get to zoom. We we've done a dinner club, I think for the last two years, every Wednesday night um, with you and a couple other people. Um, and I won't say the location cause I don't want it to get crowded in the restaurant. <laughs> like we found a really amazing restaurant that the food is really good, really affordable. The decor is, and it's almost empty. And we always, and I posted about it once and it got crowded. You guys are like, don't you dare mention yeah. that restaurant again. So I apologize. <laughs> you're, not in, you're not invited anymore if you post about Oh, if I mention it again, I'm in trouble. So I genuinely told me I'm out. So, well, this was super fun for me. I'm going to mention again, thinkorange.com slash Easter. So thinkorange.com slash Easter. Um, Amy, give say your uh, Instagram handle in case people didn't see it. Amy M. Fenton. All right. Amy M. Fenton, A-M-Y-M-F-E-N-T-O-N. Follow her if you're a church leader, church staff, church volunteer. 
parent who wants some sanity. She's a great follow. So have a great rest of your night, Amy. Thanks for doing this with me. Thank you, John. See you later. See ya.